All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you very much, Chip. So Sueta and I are going to talk to you guys about how we started with the Blockhead Service Broker as a hackathon project, and then we turned it into a CF extensions project. So initially, back in April, when we started thinking about a hackathon idea, we wanted to do something with blockchain. And one thing that we realized is that if you've done development for blockchain, you know that it's actually pretty difficult. There's a lot of knowledge that you have to have before actually starting the development. As a developer, you have to bring up a blockchain node first, and then you have to create a blockchain account. You need to bring in a smart contract or develop one. You need to deploy it on the node, and then you need to have a decentralized web application and then integrate it with the contract, with the smart contract that you deploy to the blockchain. And then you need to manage your decentralized web application. And all of this you have to do as a, as a developer. So we realized that with Cloud Foundry and platforms like Cloud Foundry, what we do is that we've already simplified these steps for 12-factor web applications. And one thing that we realized is that decentralized web apps are basically not very different from the 12-factor web applications. Essentially, what you have is a 12-factor web application, which has blockchain as the backing data store. And one of the principles in the 12 factors for a 12-factor web application is obviously that you can have uh, backing services. So our idea was that we can, in fact, turn blockchain as a backing service to a decentralized web app and make that decent, treat that decentralized web app basically as a web application. And that blockchain service that we expose can then allow you to connect to a public blockchain network or to a pri private blockchain network. And that's what we basically did. What we did was that we um, benefited from the simplicity that Cloud Foundry already brings to the web applications, and we tried to bring that simplicity into decentralized web apps. So we took all those complicated steps that I initially talked about, and we kind of mapped them to the three steps of managing a service in the life cycle of how basically a service broker manages a service. So now you can create a blockhead service, which basically creates an account for you, brings up a blockchain node, and connects it to the blockchain network. And then you can deploy your dApp um, to the platform. And then you can bind your service um, to the uh, application and basically pass the contract information to the broker, which deploys your contract and then binds it, provides all the information that you need, your application needs in order to connect to blockchain. And with that, we significantly simplified the, the extra knowledge or information that you had to have about how to write blockchain applications. And with that, I'm going to pass it to Sueta, who's going to show you a quick demo of how things are going to work. So before I get into the demo, can we go back to the slide? Yeah. I want to just quickly go over the setup so that we're all on the same page. What we have here, we have deployed an IBM Cloud Foundry Enterprise Edition environment. Uh, we had a keynote yesterday talking about how this is now GA, and this runs on the IBM Kubernetes service. So it's running on a Kubernetes cluster in IKS. What we also have is our voting decentralized application. So we're going to be running our D app in there. But for our D app, we need a blockchain node. So what we have is a Bosch environment. And this is running in the IBM Cloud on SoftLayer. What we are going to do is have deploy the broker into our Bosch environment. And then using the OSB API, and you go, when you go through the lifecycle there, we're going to actually create a node. And we're calling it the ETH service. ETH is short for Ethereum. Um, and then with that, let me, and then we're going to bind the two. So let me go and go through that. OK. So what I have on the left is going to just be where I'm running my CF commands. On the right is actually the broker VM that we've SSH'd into, so you guys can kind of watch what's happening. So I've already deployed the application, um, but it's not running yet. I've pushed it up. I've made sure it's staged and everything to kind of quicken the process. And what we're going to deploy is a simple voting app, but that's going to use a blockchain smart contract in the background to kind of keep track of the data and kind of ensure uh, security in that. So just to kind of show you guys what we have right now, 
There should be nothing in this environment except the basic VCAP application information that you're usually getting. For our marketplace, we have a couple of services. So the first one, we only want to pay attention to the first one at. The second one, you guys can see later in a breakout session that's happening later today. Uh, the first one over there is an Ethereum plan that they have, and we're going to be deploying a get the development node. And we're going to be, this is a Bosch deployed broker that we have there. And then on the right, I want you guys to just kind of pay attention to the Docker PS. So basically, when I create the service, I'm expecting to see a, a new node that's coming up. I'm going to call it my app. And as you can see, we have a new container that started coming up. You can kind of see what ports are open. If you're familiar with Ethereum development, this is usually the one that you want, the 8545. That's how you connect to a node, and you can issue commands and interact with smart contracts that have been deployed into the network. The node that we've deployed is a development node, which means it hasn't connected to the public network yet, but it's just there for you to test around and test your smart contracts. So now that we've created the node, we want to bind it. Now, when we bind the thing, we're going to do, we have to provide a little bit more information. Because one of the features of Blockhead is we're going to deploy the smart contract associated with your dApp for you. And so we need a contract URL. So over here is the, um, this is a smart contract that we're using. It's a very simple thing. It's a voting app. We're going to have two proposals. Basically, you can vote A or you can vote B, and it keeps an internal count. Very simple, basic kind of an application. I'm going to take the URL here. So you can put basically anything that's accessible on the internet. You can, as long as it's a Solidity contract, we can deploy it for you. And I'm going to find that. And while that's running, OK, let me start the app now. And by the way, this app application is using the Web3.js library. So it's a node application that's using some of the Ethereum tooling to, you know, to connect to an Ethereum node. And while that starts, I want to quickly go through the environment so we can show some of the pieces here. So this is the blockhead service binding that we're returning back. So all, these are all the ports you can talk to to connect back to your Ethereum node. As I mentioned before, the 8545 port is the one that we're mostly interested in. This is the how you can actually, where the node is sitting. And then in the node information, if you're familiar again with Ethereum development, this ABI is basically saying, how, what is the format of the contract? What are the functions available to me? We have user account addresses in here, contract addresses. And then we also have the transaction information of deploying the contract. So if I go back here, we can see that it's deployed. I'm going to open this up. And here's our app. And it's pretty simple. Do you prefer dogs or cats? I'm a dog lover, so I'm going to vote and submit that. And this URL will be open for all of you guys. So if you guys want to vote, please feel free. It's vote.opencloud-cluster.us-sout.containers.appdomain.cloud. <laughs> In case you're interested, <laughs> I will tweet that later. Um, and then with that, let me go back to our slides. So we've kind of gone through the demo, and I just kind of want to talk about where the project is at the moment. We, as uh, Chip mentioned earlier, this is a CF extensions project. We're very excited about that. In the hackathon, we initially started this as a Ruby broker, so we have completely rewritten it in Go, so we're happy about that. We have a Bosch release currently. And then later today, we're also going to be showing in a breakout session that Nima is running with our friend Morgan about how this broker can also be deployed using Kubernetes. And they're going to go into a deeper dive into that. That's at 3.30. Um, we also have office hours at 11.55 if you want to come and talk to us. 
And then finally, where do we want to take this? Currently, I told you we're running these nodes in development mode. I want to also, we want to also be able to connect these to the public networks. We want to try other networks out. One of the ones that I'm particularly interested in is Hyperledger Fabric, which is a permission blockchain. And then we also have an idea of a contract marketplace, so users can kind of pick a contract. Um, we want to integrate that too. And with that, thank you.